Yes, Liverpool and Manchester have often been fierce rivals tonight. Both can celebrate making it through to the final round to host the Eurovision Song Contest. You'll remember those great scenes a few months ago and how the war meant Ukraine can't host next year's event. Now, seven UK cities are in the running with two fighting it out in our region. And we have reporters in both cities tonight. So in alphabetical order, we can first cross over to Victoria Grimes in Liverpool. Oh, I like that, Elaine. Alphabetical laws are very diplomatic indeed. Yes, fantastic news for our region. Two of our great cities are in the running for this huge honour, along with Birmingham, Leeds, Newcastle, Glasgow, and, of course, Sheffield as well. Now, there's a few criteria you've got to hit. You need to have an arena which can seat 10,000 people, a good hotel infrastructure nearby with plenty of beds, and, of course, an international airport, amongst other things. Now, one of the first to give their reaction this morning was Liverpool's own Scouse songbird, Sonia. You'll remember that she uh, was actually our UK entry for the Eurovision in 1993. And she says she thinks Liverpool is head and shoulders above the crowd. It's got to be Liverpool, um, music heritage of the world. Um, we're going to have the biggest party ever, um, make Ukraine proud. And, you know, it's just going to be massive. Obviously, me, my heart, it's, it's got to be Liverpool. Yeah, she's very excited, isn't she? And quite rightly so, because nobody can argue with Liverpool's musical pedigree, can they? So today we went down to find out what people live here were thinking in the very, very heart of the musical centre of the city and Matthew Street. Liverpool is home of the Beatles and what a better place of a city to host the Eurovision where the Beatles came from. Give Liverpool a chance. Give to it. You do a good job. We've got the Beatles, we've got all oh, everything here. We've got everything? Yeah. But Manchester will get do us do. Yeah, they're from Essex, those lads, and they're even more excited than some of those from Liverpool that we spoke to. And somebody else who's incredibly excited about this is, of course, Mayor Joanne Anderson. I mean, Joanne, this is fantastic news for the city. What does it mean for Liverpool? Well, it's going to give us the boost we all need, not only to we tick all the boxes, but we're really good at throwing a party. <laughs> and we've got an amazing sense of social justice. So we're doing it for Ukraine. You know, it's their party, but it's in our house. But we're just made up. We can, you know, throw our hat in the ring. Because there's so many people from Ukraine who have come here to Liverpool and have been yeah. welcome with open arms away from the horrors of what's going on for them at home. You know, they would be a very, very special part, I would yeah. imagine, of for course. Liverpool. And we're going to engage with everyone. We're twins with uh, Odyssey in Ukraine and we will engage and we will do whatever we can to throw them the best party ever. And, you know, from our track record, from you know, the Grand National to hosting football events to the Giants to everything else that we've done, we certainly know how to throw a party. Well, some might say that at the moment, you know, we're going through a cost of living crisis. This. this would obviously cost a huge amount of money to put on. What would you say to those people? Of course, and anyone who's, who's making the decision is in the same position as local authorities. We're all in a really difficult position. But I don't think we can afford not to be this ambitious because the impact on our visitor economy would be fantastic. You know, we benefit from this from years to come, just as we have a European capital of culture. We're the only one in the UK. And we know from anyone who's been here in Liverpool in the past, we're a very different city because of that. And what would you say? say to Manchester if they actually ended up getting it, John? Well, we're not competing. We don't compete with Manchester. <laughs> we're sister cities and, you know, it's good for Manchester, it's good if it comes to Liverpool. But our pretty waterfront, I think, has just got a little bit of a unique selling point with that one. <laughs> Thanks so much, Joanne. Glistening in the sunshine tonight alone. Back to you. OK, Vicky, that's the case for Liverpool. So let's zoom down the M62 to Manchester now and our reporter, Emma Sweeney. Emma, is confidence high there too? Yes, it absolutely is, Elaine. Of course, every city believes it has what it takes, but here in Manchester, they point to the rich musical heritage. We've had bands here like the likes of Oasis, uh, Happy Mondays, Elbow, so many of them born out of the city, and many of them, of course, would have performed in that arena uh, right behind us. But as well as that, Sasha Lord, the nighttime economy advisor, has come out and said Manchester should have it because, well, quite frankly, it deserves it. This place was in tier three restrictions longer than anywhere else in the country, and that, of course, had 
a knock-on effect on local businesses. So that's two reasons. A third reason today by another leader was because Manchester, quite frankly, has a proven track record in doing pretty well with this kind of thing. And we will use everything we learn in the Commonwealth Games where we did this as a global event and the logistics are a huge, huge operation and a massive task. But our track record of delivering the Commonwealth Games should see us deliver the Eurovision Games, a Eurovision contest as well. So that is what the leaders think. What do the public think? Earlier on, I had a talk with them. And I can't wait, hopefully, and praying we, we get the, the bid. We have really great stuff here, so we might as well come and hopefully we get it. We are the best city in the UK, I think. Um, we are diverse. We have a lot of Eurovision fans. Well, of course, no Eurovision Song Contest is complete without those super fans. Let me introduce you uh, to Belinda. You're pretty happy about this. Tell me why Manchester. Because Manchester's going to do it. We are amazing. We are, by our very nature, music. We are, by our, by our very nature, culture. We are ready for it. It's going to be ours. It's got to be. And you're a performer. Tell me what kind of impact you think it will have on the local gigging industry as well. Well, every year we gear up for it. It's in our calendar. It gets camper as we get nearer. There's more shows that we get to perform in. We get to put more shows on. We become camper. It just becomes fantastic. That's why it needs to be right here in Manchester. And tell me, if it does come to Manchester, how are you going to celebrate? Well, it will come to Manchester and we will be celebrating by waving a flag having a little drink and singing along to all these fantastic songs as well. As you say, you're, you're pretty confident it's going to come to Manchester, but we have just heard our uh, neighbours up the road in Liverpool are also hoping to get it. Tell me why you think we've got something over them. Well, because we are Manchester. It's as simple as that. We know what we're doing here, we're ready for it. And um, I suppose we should also remember that when we do get it here, we are acting as understudy for the Ukraine. It's a very fair point. Thank you very much for talking to us, uh, Belinda. Manchester, of course, has one of the highest Ukrainian populations here in the Ukraine. Earlier on I spoke to another Eurovision superfan. She came over to Manchester after her country was uh, caught up in the war. But I'm, yeah, I'm a big fan of Eurovision myself. I went in 2004 when we uh, had it in Kiev. I was in the audience in 2017. I covered it as a journalist. Um, and I'm very happy, you know, if Manchester does win it and uh, does win the bid, I'm very happy to do all I can to help uh, it being held in Manchester. offer because they say if they are successful here they will be working with the local Ukrainian uh, community to make sure they're very much involved. Well a great debate there Emma in Manchester thank you. Now to some more